Hello everyone and welcome to our today's lecture on the circulatory system of canotis. In the circulatory system, we are firstly going to discuss the heart and structure of heart. So, in the topic of heart, we will firstly discuss about the external structure of heart, then internal structure of heart and working of heart. Now let us start with external structure of the heart. So heart of echolotis, it lies mid-ventrally in the anterior part of thoracic cavity. As in other animals also, the heart is protected inside the thoracic cavity. So likewise in the callotis also, heart is present midventrally in the anterior part of thoracic cavity. It is here also, it is enclosed by a double layered pericardium, outer visceral, inter, uh, or you can say inner, uh, outer parietal and inner visceral pericardium. The heart of calotis, as you can see in the diagram, heart is triangular in shape and red in color. It is a muscular organ having three chambers. Now, which three chambers? Upper two chambers are auricles and lower large chamber is ventricle. So, three chambers of the heart, two auricles and one ventricle. The externally, when we see externally, both the auricles, they are separated from ventricle by auriculoventricular group. You can say AV group or auriculoventricular group. If we compare both the lobes of uh, auricles, upper lobes of the auric uh, you can say heart, that means both the auricles, right auricle and left auricle. Uh, here you can see there are two diagrams, diagram A and diagram B. Diagram A is the dorsal view of calotis heart and diagram B is the ventral view of calotis heart. Now, uh, when we see any of the view, you can see that the right auricle appears larger than left auricle. The thin walled, now if you see the dorsal view of heart, uh, a thin walled, a unequally lobed uh, sac-like structure attached to auricle which is called sinus venosus. A thin walled sinus venosus it is present dorsally upon the auricles and it is reduced and unequal or smaller in size and it is bilobed. So smaller reduced lobe which is uh, the left lobe and larger uh, lobe is the right lobe. So the smaller left lobe is formed by left precaval as you can see in the diagram A the left precaval, it opens into smaller and reduced left lobe of sinus venosus. However, the right larger lobe is formed by the union of right precaval and postcaval veins. Okay, so sinus venosus, which is uh, unequally by lobe, so smaller lobe is formed by left precaval vein and larger lobe is formed by union of right precaval and post caval veins. In this case, the truncus arteriosus is absent. The apex of ventricle is attached with lever by thin fibrous structure, white in color, called as cubomaculum cordis. In both the diagram, you can see the apex of heart, it has some fine thread like structure which are called as cubomaculum cordis and the internal structure of the heart. So internally both the auricles they are separated from each other through interauricular septum. Right auricle is somewhat larger and left auricle is somewhat smaller. So right auricle has opening of sinus venosus. So, opening of sinus venosus into right auricle is known as 
sinoatrial aperture and likewise the left auricle it has opening of pulmonary vein so opening sa aperture is guarded by a pair of flap like structures called sa valves <coughs> then both the auricles they open into ventricle through separate opening right av aperture and left av aperture both the apertures are guarded by av valves auricular ventricular valves now ventricle so ventricle is thick spongy and muscular structure the wall of ventricle as shown in the diagram it is thrown into many fold like structure called as columni carni these columni carni they are connected with av valves right av valve and left av valve with the help of thin thread like structures called cordi tendini now a incomplete interventricular septum or you can say muscular ridge it divide the cavity of ventricle into two chambers the the right chamber is called cavum pulmonale and the left chamber is called cavum dorsal the cavum pulmonale has opening of pulmonary arch and cavum dorsal has opening of uh, right and left systemic arches the opening of all these arches are guarded by semilunar valves these semilunar valves they prevent the back flow of blood now we will uh, discuss about the working of heart as we know heart is the main pumping organ of circulatory system the blood from all the parts of body it is collected by various uh, large veins likewise precaval and postcaval veins and these caval vein collect the blood into sinus venosus in case of calotis when the sinus venosus is filled with blood it contracts and pump the blood into right auricle through this sa aperture when the blood deoxygenated blood from sinus venosus it is pumped into right auricle at the same time oxygenated blood uh, is pumped or you can say it is filled in left auricle through pulmonary vein so both the auricles they get filled with blood right side get filled with deoxygenated blood and left side get filled with oxygenated blood so both the auricles they contract simultaneously and pump the blood into the ventricle through their respective openings so right auricle pump the blood into cavum pulmonale and left auricle pump the blood into cavum dorsal so cavum pulmonale receive deoxygenated blood and cavum dorsal receive oxygenated blood however the interauricular septum which is incomplete this incomplete interauricular septum it causes mixing of some blood uh, oxygenated and deoxygenated blood so when the ventricle contracts forcefully at that time the blood from cavum pulmonale enters into pulmonary arch and it is carried to the lungs for oxygenation and the blood from cavum dorsal it enters into systemic arch and it is carried to various part of the body for distributing the oxygenated blood so this is how the working of uh, calotis heart takes place